here to dive into industry trends with leading ETF experts. This is ETF Spotlight with Nina Mishra. Hello and welcome to ETF Spotlight. I'm your host, Nina Mishra. My guest today is Dan Ahrens, Chief Operating Officer at Advisor Shares. We're talking about cannabis investing and the Advisor Shares Pure Cannabis ETF, ticker YOLO, which Dan manages. Dan, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's good to talk to you. Okay, before we get into the details of your ETF, let's talk about the legal marijuana market. Uh, It's, of course, a rapidly growing and evolving market. It's kind of coming out of shadows and becoming more mainstream. And we know that a number of alcohol companies are uh, investing in marijuana. There's so much interest in medical benefits of the plant too. Uh, So what kind of growth do you expect in legal marijuana market and what will drive this growth? Well, for overall growth, long term, we we think there's tremendous growth ahead. There's going to be volatility in any short period of time. Mm -hmm. But we've often compared uh, marijuana or cannabis potential growth to the end of prohibition in alcohol uh, decades and decades ago. If someone had invested in alcohol companies back at that time, Mm -hmm. it would have done very well for themselves. Mm -hmm. So the world has changed a great deal already in the last year and a half or two years. I was on record a couple years ago saying a fund like this wouldn't work. There wasn't enough to invest in in exchange-listed, large, liquid companies. Mm -hmm. Well, now there are. And uh, we expect many more companies to come online, and we expect to have a lot of merger and acquisition activity in this space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in the U.S., 33 states and the District of Columbia have uh, legalized marijuana's medical use and supply, and 10 states and D.C. now allow marijuana for recreational use. Uh, But it remains illegal at the federal level, and uh, we know that legalization of pot for recreational use in Canada last year provided a big boost to the industry. Do you expect any change in the federal policy here in the U.S.? Well, we we do expect it. Okay. But I do want to say, even if nothing changes in the United States for federal legalization, we think there's already tremendous growth ahead in cannabis as it is right now because it is legal in Canada, because it's legal in a number of states. And it's legal in a number of other countries around the world, not just Canada. But here's what I think is going to happen. I think there is a large push in the legislature, in legalization, in um, government uh, avenues. I also think there's a big groundswell of support publicly. Right. A lot of people are uh, using CBD oils. Uh, CBD products. There's a big push for medical use. There's a large amount of support for some form of legalization. Now, where it gets interesting is, in the United States, a lot of people are big on states' rights. Mm -hmm. So what really needs to happen, federal legalization, I don't really know if that's ever going to come. But there could just be a federal decriminalization. That would be a huge step. If the, if the federal government really said it's not going to be illegal, we'll leave it up to the states. Another step that could happen, and there's a lot of support for, is simply a federal banking bill. That means federal banks can do business with cannabis companies. That would open up a great deal of avenues in the United States for these companies, once again, without even having a full federal legalization. All these things could be a big boost to something that's already growing fast. Okay, very interesting. Now let's talk about your ETF. Uh, It's the Advisor Shares Pure Cannabis ETF, ticker again, YOLO, You Only Live Once. Very interesting. So tell us about this ETF. First of all, how did you choose this ticker symbol? And what does 
pure cannabis mean? Well, pure cannabis is just that. We really wanted this fund to be focused on the mostly the cultivation and agriculture companies, especially those in Canada. We also invest in some, you know, biotech and pharmaceutical, but not some big pharmaceutical company that might be dabbling a small amount of their uh, assets or revenue in cannabis testing. I'm talking about the smaller, uh, fast growth pharmaceutical or biotech companies where cannabis is really their focus, where it's the, the main source of their revenue or where most of their assets are tied. Again, we're really talking about the true cannabis growers, suppliers, marketers, sellers, where the bulk of their revenue or assets are tied to cannabis. We don't want to have, again, the big pharmaceutical companies that it's not really their focus. We don't want to have those companies like uh, fertilizer companies and uh, pesticides where, again, it might be a small part of their business. And we certainly don't want to have big tobacco. Uh, We've heard from a lot of marijuana or cannabis investors. They don't want big tobacco. And that's why this fund is pure cannabis. Okay. Tell us about YOLO, too. How did you decide on the ticker? Well, all we'll say is it's very important to have a memorable ticker, a a ticker that people can uh, uh, remember easily, relate to, not forget. And we've had that ticker symbol on hold for some time. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know it might be a little bit silly, but uh, it's memorable, and it's something that people can easily refer to in the fund. And, um, you know, we've heard that over time and uh, in some communications and articles, you know, YOLO is somewhat uh, uh, associated with, you know, marijuana and cannabis community. Excellent. So uh, tell us a little bit uh, more about how you select the constituents uh, for the CTF. I understand the companies that are in the CTF, uh, they should derive at least 50% of their net revenue from marijuana and hemp industries. Uh, And uh, could you also tell us a little bit about some of the top holdings? Certainly. We, um, you know, we admittedly have a a limited universe of stocks. Uh, There's only so many stocks that uh, can fit the definition of a cannabis company. And, you know, if you look on Bloomberg and other sources, there's no such thing as a cannabis industry. So I am always on the lookout for uh, companies that could be considered for cannabis. I'm looking at lots of websites, indexes, uh, newsletters, uh, what various people consider a cannabis company, and then I'll look further. So, again, it's a limited universe. Once I have that universe, you know, then we're drilling down and really looking at what companies we want to own, what companies we don't want to own, what companies we want to overweight and underweight. And this is where I'll say that in a fast-changing area like cannabis, active portfolio management is extremely, extremely important. In an area like cannabis, I would never want to be tied to blindly following an index, you know, an index that might, you know, rebalance itself once a quarter. Um, Cannabis is changing quickly, very quickly. And I can give you some examples later of stocks that we've avoided and stocks that we've uh, bought more of. Um, An important thing about our portfolio, though, besides being active and besides being able to select these things, is it's not market cap weighted either. You know, many people are familiar with some of the big names like Canopy Growth, one of the biggest. Uh, There's also Aurora Cannabis. Um, They're not my top holdings. They're actually right now my number nine and number 10 holdings. And this is a pretty concentrated portfolio of just 20-something stocks. Uh, Because those stocks have already had big transactions. A lot of people think uh, they might be a little overvalued versus their future growth prospects. Now, Aurora and Canopy, I still own them, but, again, they're not my top holdings. I even own Tilray, but it's down in the lower part of my portfolio. Another big one, Kronos, you won't find it in my portfolio. I don't like its price versus future growth prospects right now. Now, right at the top of my portfolio, 
There's a company called Organigram. It's listed on the Toronto Exchange, and it is a you know major uh, Canadian medical and recreational cultivation and agriculture company. Right behind it is uh, Green Organic Dutchman. Um, they're not small companies, but they're very small compared to Canopy and Aurora, and we like their future growth prospects. We even like their their prospects for a potential buyout, a merger, something like that. We don't hold them for that. That could be a fool's game. But um, we like those companies for their future, their current valuations versus their future growth. Uh, a couple other top five holdings that get interesting. We own Innovative Industrial Properties. Now, that's a U.S.-based company. It's been listed on the New York Stock Exchange for a number of years. Some people think in cannabis you can't own U.S. companies. Well, we can. They're a real estate company. They're a REIT that specializes in um, properties for cannabis marijuana growth. They don't actually touch the plant, and that's why they can be legal under federal law in the U.S. and legal to list on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, another U.S. company is um, Village Farms International. Again, listed in the United States. They've been traditionally a farming company that has greenhouses all over North America uh, for growing cucumbers and peppers and everything else. Well, do you know what they did in the last couple of years? They went very, very heavily into cannabis growth because they're already experienced with greenhouse growth. Um, the actual cannabis production is happening in Canada rather than in the United States. So they're a great example of what we can do in this portfolio. Okay, very interesting. Uh, so you have uh, 25 companies as of now, and uh, you talked about a little bit about the investable universe. And uh, I did that some experts still have concerns about uh, the lack of enough uh, investable names in this space, and some say that valuations are just too high. What's your take on those uh, issues? Well, there's a couple of different issues there. Um, I strongly believe that my investable universe of stocks is going to continue to grow. Um, that said, there are enough investable companies right now to fit the listing standards of exchange-traded uh, funds and to uh, diversify the fund as we need. But again, this is a fast-paced, fast-growth area. I'm going to have additional companies to invest in um, there's additional companies to invest in right now that I'm choosing not to, uh, but we're going to see additional companies come online. The next thing is valuations. Well, one of the first things I'll say about valuations in this particular space is you have to throw old fundamental research out the window. Um, it's a little bit like investing in technology companies before they've ever shown profits. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do regular fundamental research on that. You have to decide what is their capacity for growth, what is the demand, and then what's their current price versus future growth prospects. Uh, we think cannabis has tremendous, tremendous long-term growth in front of it. Uh, so, again, looking at current P.E. ratios, <laughs> it's, um, it's a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. but... Again, we like these at these prices versus where they're going to be five or ten years from now, for instance. And I'll say again, we think there's going to be a great deal of merger and acquisition activity and consolidation in this area. Okay, excellent. Uh, so there is another marijuana ETF which has been around for uh, a little more than a year. It's the Alternative Harvest ETF by ETFMG, and the ticker is 
MJ. And this took an unusual route to launch. Uh, it was a Latin America real estate fund earlier, and then they changed their focus uh, to marijuana. So they had some troubles with their custodian uh, because uh, banks uh, usually, uh, we understand that they do not want to do any business with uh, marijuana companies because it remains illegal at the federal level. But your custodian is BNY Mellon. Uh, so were they happy to do, uh, you know, custodian for, uh, to be the custodian for your fund? And also tell us how your fund, uh, YOLO, is different from MJ, first of all, uh, um, it is actively managed. And then I'm looking at the top holdings of MJ and I see all the uh, well-known companies that you also mentioned, Aurora Cannabis, Kronos, uh, GW and Tilray Canopy. Those are the top holdings uh, occupying a lot of space in the portfolio. Well, there's a, an awful lot to cover there. So mm -hmm. we're certainly aware of that uh, other fund that uh, it was the only ETF in marijuana or cannabis available in the United States because they they did do it the way they did it. Um, I don't know if they didn't go through a regular approval with the SEC because it was an existing fund. They uh, certainly um, didn't do it with the approval of their custodian bank and, as you said, had problems there. But that fund has over a billion dollars in assets in it right. because it was the only fund to invest in. So mm -hmm. that's impressive. Um, I don't know why it still charges uh, um, an expense ratio of 75 basis points. Uh, I don't know where the economies of scale are for the investors, but uh, that's for them to, to decide. It seems expensive to me for a, for a billion-dollar fund anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, you mentioned some of their top holdings. Well, it's an index. There's no portfolio manager uh, picking stocks, picking when to increase or decrease stocks. Um, you know, you've looked at my holdings, and one thing you don't see is a stock that I removed uh, three weeks ago. There's a security called Insys Therapeutics, ticker symbol INS. Well, it was in my portfolio when I launched. Mm -hmm. We decided to remove it um, back on April 25th. Well, a couple of days ago, that stock dropped about 70%. Uh, but you'll see it in other index-based funds. As an actively managed fund and an active portfolio manager, we make uh, security selections, you know, every day. Uh, a few days ago, I decided to decrease uh, Tilray before they came out with earnings. And uh, it's still in my portfolio, but uh, it's a smaller percentage of the fund. Active management is extremely, extremely important in a space like cannabis, and we think we will uh, outperform your average index through smart trading and good security selection in a very dicey area like cannabis. The other thing we don't own in our fund, as we already talked about, is we like to stick to pure cannabis. We don't own Scott's miracle Grow. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of people have associated Scott's miracle Grow with cannabis because they acquired a couple hydroponic companies for growing marijuana. It's still not their main business. Their main business is growing grass, not that kind of grass, but grass in your lawn and um, fertilizer and so on. Uh, I don't like that stock. We also don't own big tobacco. Um, uh, we think we have enough investable companies that are really in the cannabis business. We think people that are looking for cannabis investments want just that, cannabis investments. They don't want to invest in Altria and Philip Morris and, and similar companies in their cannabis fund. So those are really big differences between um, an actively managed fund like YOLO versus that other fund, MJ. Yeah, I agree with you that this is a very rapidly evolving space and very volatile space too, so active management can really add value. Uh, now, talking about volatility, uh, pot stocks are known for their volatility, 
and that's expected because these are mostly young riskier companies and etfs that hold these companies uh, uh, would likely have less volatility due to diversification uh, but they would still be quite volatile compared to the broader indexes uh, so what would you advise investors who are unnerved by this volatility should they invest for the longer term or uh, should they look at shorter term trading opportunities well we absolutely think people should look towards the long term um we think the the prospects for for growth over a long period of time are tremendous tremendous within marijuana or cannabis but uh we we definitely don't want to shy away from the fact that these are smaller up and coming very volatile stocks and many of them are are priced at high price to earnings ratio some of them don't even have earnings yet uh so yes people need to be prepared for a bumpy ride i still think professional management in a diversified portfolio is very important now i still believe in a concentrated portfolio i don't think i ever want to own more than 30 or 40 stocks at the most because we want to be very selective in the stocks we're picking we want to know these companies well uh so a fairly concentrated portfolio but still it's professional management it's spread out over currently 20 something stocks it's better than owning just a small handful of very volatile cannabis stocks and the other thing what we do with active management and sometimes we actually want to take advantage of that volatility. There's something that too many investors fail to do that's called buy low and sell high. Mm-hmm. And um we want to take advantage of volatility sometimes mm-hmm. because these are very reactionary stocks. Sometimes they overreact to news and earnings announcements within the space. Well, we want to take advantage of that and within the portfolio sometimes do some trading to buy low and sell high overall for low turnover we're not trading a great deal but we still take advantage of some of that volatility to add performance to the fund okay great now let's briefly discuss your um, other etf that you manage it's the advisor shares ycetf ticker act and it holds tobacco marijuana and alcohol companies so it's basically anti esg etf <laughs> so tell us about this etf now thank thanks for mentioning it it's a it's a, a smaller fund but mm-hmm. growing and you know i mentioned a couple of years ago that i didn't think a pure cannabis or marijuana fund was was even feasible so after talking to a lot of people we got the idea that there's going to be a great deal of overlap uh now and even more in the future between alcohol and tobacco and cannabis you know alcohol and tobacco companies have been doing this for decades and decades they have uh a lot of attorneys a lot of uh uh people in washington um they have a great deal of expertise in navigating highly regulated markets and they have great distribution systems and that's why we've seen companies like Constellation Brands alcohol company make an investment in canopy growth. We've seen Altria make investments in tobacco company and excuse me in cannabis companies. So, this fund um advisor shares by ACTF, ticker symbol ACT as you said, that ACT stands for alcohol, cannabis and tobacco. Mm-hmm. We own alcohol, we own big tobacco, um we own cannabis related companies like the Scott Miracle Grow I talked about and some of those big pharmaceutical companies and new age beverages that makes cannabis infused beverages so ACT is a play on the overlap between alcohol and tobacco and cannabis and we've always thought that alcohol and tobacco companies can be practically recession resistant they can be high dividend payers they can be steady no matter what the market's doing no matter what the economy is doing and um so we expect yolo to be high aggressive growth and volatile 
and we expect this fund ACT to be a much smoother ride and uh, to play on the future growth of cannabis, but uh, in a much more conservative way. Very interesting. Anything else investors need to know about uh, cannabis investing or YOLO or ACT? Well, about YOLO and ACT in particular, another thing that we're always proud of is as an actually managed ETF, you know, we have full transparency. So at advisorshares.com on any given day, people are welcome to see our full holdings profile of the fund. They can see everything that we own. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, from time to time, I'll remove a security that I don't like, like uh, INSYS. I'll uh, decrease a uh, stock like Tilray. Um, so on any given day, people can go to advisorshares.com, take a look at our holdings. You can see what I've bought and sold. Uh, we have nothing to hide there, and we're proud of it. Great. And I see that you regularly post your commentary, too, so that is also worth reading. Investors should definitely take a look. And oh, good point. We, we do try to communicate an awful lot. I sometimes make a video updates, and we write monthly commentary. Uh, we send out a lot on Twitter. And uh, if we're making changes to the portfolio or have updates in the uh, fund, um, people should take a look at uh, our Twitter handle and uh, for advisor shares or for the fund's tickers, and uh, we'll keep people updated there. Okay, great. And that's all we have time for today. Dan, thanks again for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>